Hello, everybody. My name is Zhuo Hopeng. So, allow it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce some thinking about the NFV evolution. So, talk about uh, our thinking about uh, this very important solutions. I'm the chief solution architect uh, of Huawei Cloud Core product line. So, let's first talk about the Telco Cloud uh, evolution route. So, we just uh, divide into four phases. The first phase is, is about the virtualization. Actually, we just, uh, in this phase, we just solve the software and hardware decoupling. We just move the uh, WinF from the dedicated resource from uh, to the courts. And the uh, next phase is cloudification. So in this phase, we just uh, uh, move our solutions to be near the architecture. And that means the application logic and the data will be separated and the service logic will become stateless and we can get the benefits from the automatic obligation deployment while orchestrator. Then we move to cloud native from 2020 to 2023 and that means in the current phase. So in this phase actually we just introduced some more cutting edge technologies like microservices and also the containers, and also the end-to-end -end automa automa automatic uh, orchestration and upgrade from the microservice service A-B test. And we can also get the benefits from the la low latency, SLA, QS guarantee, and the edge cloud collaborations. Next phase, we just think about we will move to the cloud intelligence and it will be happen in, we hope, will be happening in 2023 plus. In, in the next uh, phase, we will introduce more technologies, more solutions like the automation and also self-healing and uh, like some other solutions like the uh, self-optimization. So you will find actually we just, uh, uh, we just on the on very smooth way from the virtualization to cloudification, cl to cloud native, and also we reach the, the cloud intelligence. So it's face by face. So next, uh, I just want to uh, tell about some Huawei experiences. So actually, we just uh, have some experiences for the cloud native implementations for the telco cloud. So you will find actually for the left side slide, Left bank, uh, left part of the, this slide. Actually, we introduce the cloud uh, containers in virtual machines, and we also believe this solution is the most mature commercial solution that matches the goal of telco cloud native. And also, this is some very natural architectural extensions of the basic ETSI uh, free manual framework. And Huawei actually very actively joined the. Uh, the ETSI SD free uh, activities. How we continue to activity, activity continues to contribute to the standardization work of SD free and also cooperate with industry partners to promote the publication of telco cloud native specifications in SD free. So while we also implement based on the specifications defined in ETSI standard, standardization group. And uh, nowadays we introduced uh, uh, a lot of technologies like uh, openness optimization, SBA, and also steadiness design and machine learning for our qualitative uh, implementations. And uh, in China, you know, China has the biggest population in the world. So in China, we just uh, cooperate with uh, uh, Hyper Operator A, and uh, we have uh, helped him, helped them to build the hyperscale centralized NFA telecom cloud in China. And it serves all, like a uh, service for hundreds of millions of end users. And uh, in China, you know, uh, for this uh, operator, for this carrier, the provinces of 
of, of, uh, of the country are categorized into eight regions to centralize the data center in each region to cover multiple provinces to deploy two, three, four, five hyper-converged core networks. In one DC, there are more than 1,000 servers are deployed. So for the ICE, for the PASS, we also reached as a, a very, uh, very high capacity. I don't know if it is, is the largest uh, capacity, but I think maybe the top three uh, capacities. And for these solutions, actually, we are based on the ETSI interface specifications as related, especially related to the container in VMs. And that means our solutions complied with the ETS NFA specifications. And uh, we have proved the rationality and uh, adaptability of uh, ETS specifications. And all the, all the solutions are running very good in the field. And uh, we also, based on these solutions, we got the camera grid. We got the GL and the automation. And at the same time, we got the openness and uh, also the hyper uh, coverage. So uh, besides the specification, besides the standardizations, we also do some enhancing Kubernetes for, for fulfilling the telco cloud native requirements, like the high performance, like the high reliability, and also the networking enhancement. So for high performance, we just improve Kubernetes to support Luma affinity scheduling. And also we improve Kubernetes to support dynamic huge page for more flexible resource allocations. At the same time, we need to solve the hardware acceleration requirement for the, from the edge. So we just let the Kubernetes integrated with some acceleration hardware, for example, the network processor, the NP. And this will significantly improve the forwarding performance. And also we improve the Kubernetes to support the partial container network CPU isolations. So for the high durability, so you know the cost the ice is not very renewable compared with the, the legacy hardware. So we need to try to find some solutions to get the five line availability services with three line availability infrastructure. So we just introduced some solutions like the flow control on 64 times overhead overload. And also the WinF hot backup the storage bypass mode. So all these things we do, we got the high durabilities and for networking. So we just introduced the, the multiple network planes and also the fixed IP, the CNI plug improvements. So just let the wing F application smoothly move on top of the very hyper telco cloud. So all the things we have implemented in the field and get a very positive response from our customer. So talk about the uh, future evolutions. We are thinking about uh, to introduce more technologies like the distributed lightweight container for 5G edge deployment. So you know, for edge deployment, uh, there are always some challenges and will take place in the coming years. Maybe in this year, we will face these challenges. For example, there are very limited hardware resources in edge sites. For example, there is only two to four lots in 80% of edge sites. So in, maybe in some places, it's only, even only one lot in one site. And you know, our ICE solution is based on OpenStack. And OpenStack starts from three lots. So we needed to solve these challenges. And we also find some solutions, find some solutions. So the first one is we're using the environmental containers in that edge site to get a better performance. Just uh, maybe in some place, we just dismiss the virtual machine 
we just use the uh, environmental directly and environmental containers. And we also using that weighted management system in edge and also the edge center collaborations for easy operations. So we would not need to arrange a person to just uh, go to some field, field site to, to do installation, to do troubleshootings. So we also think about uh, in maybe in, in one province, in, for example, in China, maybe the operator will, uh, will install tens of thousands of sites for the edge. So we cannot, uh, we, we cannot maintain the edge site like the central site. So we need to find some new high efficiency solutions. So next, uh, we just uh, think about uh, the uh, operations. I think about the future evolutions, how to get the intelligent and automated operations. So why we want to find these solutions? Because, so you know, in 5G era, so there are so many lots compared with the 4G network. The controller plane are centralized and with very high capacity. And the user plane and the mobile uh, edge computing will be deployed everywhere. There are so many sites will be deployed. So that means this network will become very complex, complex compared with the 4G network. So we are thinking about how to simplify the, the optimization. So how to simplify the, the operations. So the first one is uh, we, we, we think, uh, anyway, the cost, the, all the solutions will be compliant with the ETSI. That means our solution is standard and open. And we need to introduce a single view on cross layer topologies. And also we just need to think about the inter data center end-to-end -end resource management. And uh, at the same time, we need to think about the end-to-end -end automation by workflow and AI engine. So I think the workflow and the AI engine is very important uh, for the automated uh, operations. So, you know, previously, uh, the, we will do the op operation step by step. And it means there will introduce a lot of trouble if the edge site will increase the tens, tens of times. So that means we need to introduce the workflow and also introduce the AI engine. So for example, we, we introduce the automatic uh, network design, automated and fast service deployment, and also the automated test, especially for the edge site. And also the smooth upgrade with uh, uh, WinF and NFUI synergy, and also introduce the AI technologies to enable the fault detection just uh, make the problem locating time will be, will be shortened just to let the operator to do faster problem locating. And uh, at the same time, we also introduced some very good uh, solution, especially for the uh, upgrade. So we introduced the A-B test. I think the A-B test is very popular for the OTT field, but it's still not very popular for the city world, the telecom world. So for far away, we just uh, proved as the A-B test is very good for the, for the telecom world, especially for the very complete, complicated the 5G network. So for example, we just uh, implement some solutions like the independent micro service version control Every microservice has its own software version and uh, we can upgrade the change the service, only upgrade the change the services. And we can also do the microservice based A-B test. And uh, there is uh, zero service interruption and also uh, we can get the benefit from the business agility. And it means uh, the customer ask us to implement some new requirement so we just upgrade one microservice and also using the A-B test to do not to in, interrupt any running uh, services. And we also introduce the unified control and the real-time KPI to monitoring, to issue 
the successful uh, software upgrade. That means uh, very, very similar, like the gray scale upgrade. For example, when we finish the upgrade, we just uh, relocate uh, some uh, new test uh, subscribers to the new version and uh, to do uh, the service test. When everything is okay, we just uh, swap the AB plane, the AB version, just uh, to, to introduce the minimum interruption for the services. And finally, when we think about the future evolution of the NF federation, we uh, think about uh, something is very important. Important. So Huawei, as a very uh, as a main player for the NF solutions, we will continue to support and actively contribute to ETSISG NF federations, cooperate with the industry partner to explore telco cloud native road ahead. The some something we need to do. The first is we, we are thinking about to specifying the basic capacity set of the telco cloud relative as the baseline guidance for industry practice in cloudification evolution. Second, we are thinking about defining the foundation of NFA architecture evolution to support the key uh, edge scenarios of uh, container environmental. So there are some challenges really take place, will take place in the edge site. We are thinking about to introduce the container environmental technologies. And I think the nowadays the standardization in, in NFA, in ETSI NFA specification is based on virtual machine. There are some impact when we introduce the container environmental. So we, Huawei are very, uh, very much to want to discuss with uh, our, our colleagues in ETSI standardized group to, to do a uh, good def definitions for the container environmental. The third, when it's uh, think about uh, to enhancing the de facto container-based solutions with camera grid uh, telco cloud relative requirements. Personally, I just mentioned about the performance of high reliability and uh, some uh, extensions. So I think about maybe in the future, there are still more challenges. For example, when we move our solutions for some very high-end industry, a vertical industry, we need to think about maybe we need to reach more, uh, more higher, and we, which we need to get some high restrictions for the reliability. So we need to refine our solutions a lot. Finally, I think we need to strengthen the collaborations of edge and the center with unified management and the tracing systems. And it means maybe, for example, in the future, we just want to, to introduce the, the workflow to do the upgrade for, a lot, for the edge sites because you know, as the customer, the carrier will deploy a lot of edge sites. So we just, we, we cannot, like, like previously, just upgrade them in one in one light. It's impossible. Maybe the upgrade will will last some several months. So we needed to some some new tools, some new technologies to do the upgrades. This is some new challenges and new solutions. I think that is some a short introduction about my thinking about the NFA evolutions. Uh, if, if you all guys have some questions, it's uh, it's very uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to discuss with you. You can send me your questions uh, to the email. Uh, you can you can record it. Thank you very much.